Okay, we are back. Yut is apparently making a video, which is a terrifying prospect. Um, <laughs> I think what I'll do now, kind of keeping with tradition, is do a quick recap of what we're trying to do, uh, and do a, a quick run through what the code looks like now, maybe throw some comments in there to make it a bit more clear, uh, and then we'll carry on and sort of add some new features to this. So, again, if there's anyone new, what we're trying to do is we've created this kind of territory map with different areas on the ground here. And we're trying to work out a system whereby um, in Steamhounds, which is a turn-based tactical game we're working on, it's our kind of main project. It's the kind of game where there are matchmaking battles between players. And we want a system, like a season-based system probably, where players pick one of the factions in the game. And then whenever they do ranked battles and compete in the multiplayer, they're gaining some kind of points for their faction, which affect their faction's territory and allow them to kind of fight for position in the city like this. And there'll be some way for them to, you know, choose which, you know, if these green and yellow factions kind of have this front here, right, where there's kind of combat going on between them, you know, maybe if I'm a green player, I want to focus my attention here so that I will... Um, uh, when I win battles, I, I'm putting that effort towards like taking over this territory from the yellows, for example. And we're playing around, kind of simulating that, and figuring out, you know, what if all the players, you know, if they spread out their, if all the players for one faction kind of spread their influence out evenly, how does it play out? What about if they all try and focus down one territory? Like maybe they, you know, jump on Discord and start communicating and figure out a way to coordinate that. Then how will that play out? Will that mean that they always win? And we want to try some of those systems and also work out if there's other mechanics we want to play around with which might make sense being layered on top of this like you know what if certain territory was more significant and gave you like some passive bonus or something or what if territory is just maybe a certain territory is just harder to take over but then harder for somebody to take back off of you how does that affect people's strategies and stuff like that uh, so we're using this web-based tool called p5.js to do this um, What's kind of nice is that there's this something called open processing, which gives us a nice um, web-based editor, so we can run this all in the browser. Uh, the reason I'm using a browser-based framework for this is that ultimately I would like, I think it'd be cool to make this part of our like Twitch overlay on the Twitch channel, so we can do some cool like faction warfare stuff with people on the Twitch, like even before that's implemented in the game. Uh, I've noticed for some reason this is starting to run really slow, so I'm going to try reopening another tab here and see if that helps any okay let's see how we're doing yeah, okay, so I'm going to run through the code again as well. So what we've kind of defined here is we've got our factions here. Each faction has uh, a particular color, which are using to highlight their territory, and they have a certain home territory. Um, if we look back on our... Oh, we did not care about that anymore. If we look back on our map, then we have these things, and we've given them all kind of ID numbers. That's, we kind of just needed this to specify how these all connect together and stuff like that. So maybe if I move that over to the side, this stuff will make more sense. So, yeah, so we have, for example, Territory 0, which has neighbors like 1 and 17. It has a certain center point, which we just use for like some drawing, rendering stuff. And they all start off with like no owner. But over time, one of these factions can kind of become the owner of each bit of territory and stuff like that. Um, and our church faction is based in... Uh, territory zero, and then the industrialists are kind of in District 22. Um, so then we have our preload where we just kind of load all of these images. So we, you know we load the background and all of the all of the territory images. And these territory images are just like uh, they're like this, right? This is the layer for one of these territories. And each one, it's not just a tiny image, it's actually the size of the whole thing. Just kind of a lazy thing, because it means when we draw them, we just draw them all like sort of full screen and they just, it works out, right? They end up um, 
so so we load all of our images up to begin with. Then we kind of set up our canvas size to match the image and actually all of the uh, territories and stuff in there. So we initialize them with like each faction having zero influence over each each bit of territory. Um, and then we just go through the factions and we say, hey, for the fact for the territory which I'm is my kind of home. I'm going to just set myself to be the owner and give myself like max influence from the get-go. So zero starts off with max 100 influence from the church, and this one starts with max influence from the industrialists. So that's the setup, and then once through each uh, iteration of the loop. Yeah, sorry, Utah, I'm afraid with my streaming setup, I don't have the audio from my desktop coming through, and I I did try and unmute it, but that didn't work. So I, <laughs> as much as I would like to spend 10 minutes letting people hear that or something, if they want to check out in their chat, then that's that's their own <laughs> that's their own decision. I'm not going to force that on people. <laughs> so uh, I kind of talk about the drawing code first. So every time through this loop, this draw loop is called, or this draw function is called by the, pro the framework we're using every frame, basically. This is where we do all of our update and draw stuff. Um, we just draw the background, then we draw each territory. If it doesn't have an owner, uh, then we kind of draw it in this transparent white kind of color. Otherwise, we draw it in the the color of, you know, the faction, whoever, whoever happens to own it. Uh, we're also drawing a dot in the center point of each one. I don't think we actually need to do that anymore. And I think it could be as simple as saying, if nobody owns it, then maybe we don't need to draw it at all. I don't actually think it's necessary to draw the unknown things, and it kind of just makes things look a bit uglier than they need to be. Okay. So, okay, you can actually see this running now, and what's happening is if we turn on a little debug thing, each area has a certain amount of influence from each faction, so right now we can see the yellow faction is spreading their influence over all of the sort of neighboring bits of territory and the green faction are doing the same. You can have to zoom in there. And then once they get to 100, they take over that territory and start spreading their influence even further. I think what's happening is it's still running in the background and it's kind of slowing down this editor. I wonder if I can get a way to stop that. do is something like yeah so if uh, space is pressed then we'll toggle debug draw else if it's escape We'll call this no loop function and all this does again this is built into the processing framework it's basically just says stop calling this draw function let's see if this works okay with that going i press escape nope i did not do what i expected make this another key instead Q will do. Yeah, if I'm going to use this p5.js in the future, I need to figure out a kind of 
the only way to do this because it's not running super fast here. have done the job. Oh, did not mean to do that. Press Q. Now our editor is running a bit more nicely. Alright, so back to what the code is actually doing. This is purely some like debug drawing stuff. Um, yeah, so every time we call this simulate function, the idea is that we're going to implement different strategies for how different factions will try and sort of spread over the map and this one is like the even spread strat we're calling it and what all they do is they figure out you know if where where can i expand into so if i own this territory then i can expand into all of the neighbors or if i own these three then there's a whole set of other neighbors i can expand into so it puts those into a list basically and then it just spreads its influence sort of over that list then we have a little function here which handles when that influence crosses over a threshold, we now own that territory. Um, I think what might make sense is that when somebody takes over the territory, we reset all the other influence there. I wonder who that could be. Stan Jason Potter. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the thanks for the follow there. <laughs> so we're gonna reset this all to zero except for, for ourselves, which goes to one hundred. And I think this will allow territory to kind of um, switch back and forth basically between these factions. So let's check that out. Let's make this a bit higher so it runs a bit faster. This is interesting. I feel like what's going to happen is these two are going to like swap territories, which is kind of weird. I feel like that doesn't exactly make sense. I hadn't anticipated this, but it's kind of logical that this will happen, right? They're both going to reach 100 at the same time, maybe? Or it just kind of becomes arbitrary. Yeah, this is kind of weird. This is not quite playing out how I would expect. So I don't know if you followed what was happening just there. But what I think happened, if I switch back over to the map here. So we've got our two factions. The other one's actually kind of orangey. So the green faction had So yeah, I think what happened was um, 
Machinaria was say okay so we got some faction here with territory and then another one so let's print like this there's another faction coming in and they're battling over and then what happened was they were both spreading influence into their neighbors right so this got up to like 95 and this got up to like 95 and then the way the simulation happens, like one of them sort of gets to go first each time. And um, what happened was this got to 100, and then this became green. So now the yellow is like no longer able to attack this, right? But they still had like 95% influence over it, even though they're no, now like no longer even like connected to it. It's not even a neighbor anymore. But at some point. They managed to take back over this. And then the next turn, they only had another five. So this got ticked up to like 100. And then in two turns, basically, they kind of took over that one and then immediately took over this one because they still had all that old influence sort of hanging around. So I feel like this doesn't totally make sense. Um, one way is if we got rid of the concept of anyone really owning a territory and it was just all about this influence bar, right, of like orange versus green. And in which case the idea of, oh, right now I own this territory is like, doesn't really make sense because we get this issue. <laughs> hey, at least our follow account's increasing, I guess. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not sure about this. I think what I may do is just kind of detect... Hmm, or maybe have this idea of a territory being like in conflict be like a kind of special case, maybe? So, maybe what happens... And again, I'm just kind of spitballing here. Like, this could go any number of ways. This is just another idea that kind of makes sense to me. It's like, okay, you got your territories like this. If somebody else owns this territory, then maybe rather than taking it over, all that happens is I'm chewing away at Green's influence, right? Um, so it starts at 100, and then it eventually get down to like just like 5 or something, and then it gets down to 0, and then maybe this territory now is just like open again. And then it becomes like a race. You know, all the influence is reset to zero, and now it's like a race between who wants to try and take it over again. Um, I feel like that's quite nice because green might make the decision of like, let's actually just abandon this and try and like, you know, spread over, spread over this way instead, and that would be a perfectly viable option. Or they could put a bit of their resources here to like slowing down. Actually, that wouldn't happen. It would kind of be like a race. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good point, right? Like maybe if you conquer a zone, yeah, then it has some invulnerability. That's a way to do it. Um, basically, what I'm thinking is like, um, ultimately, there, there could be more factions as well, right? There could be, let's say there's a blue faction. In the final game, there's going to be probably four factions, three or four factions that you can choose. What I kind of worried about is if it's a case of, imagine they've each got a little progress bar, they're filling up, right? So blue's got a certain amount, orange has got a certain amount. But then when it fills up, does, does all the effort blue put in, is that just lost? Because they didn't like win the race, it's now like an orange tile. Is that a waste of effort from blue? Maybe that's not a bad thing, because then there's more of a strategic element of like, oh, if we can't win the race for this place, we're just going to abandon it. I feel like that it potentially is an issue, but it might also be an interesting point of strategy. So I think I'm going to try implementing that form, that system now, and, and see how it plays out, at least.
yeah right like the idea of like defense and attack being kind of different i feel like that absolutely does make sense um well, i'm really not loving this editor it's running super slow for me right now So let's do something here where So if it's not owned by anyone Then we're just going to take it over straight up, that's fine Otherwise So, like, yeah, so when, when it ticks over, we'll reset the influence. Uh, and if there's no current owner, we'll... Actually, no, that becomes unnecessary then. Otherwise, if there was an owner, then we're going to kind of set that owner to null which then makes it like a free space again. And then we can like race to see who gets to take it back. So let's have a look. Yeah, so what do you mean by a simple player system? I'm interested in what exactly you're talking about there. Well, so you know what? I feel like this is going to be easier to visualize if we draw a little bars instead of numbers because they're kind of getting lost so Each faction has an amount of players and each faction can give. Okay, so there's some randomness. Yeah, I think that's a really good next step, actually. So I think as long as this kind of works, I think like, yeah, that's the next thing I'll look at is how we sort of simulate the player, the players, because it's right now it's like perfectly even, but it would be quite interesting if, yeah, like if one faction's got slightly more players than the other or slightly stronger players, then how does that really play out is kind of important. Okay, these are too big. That's kind of what I wanted to do, but it's too much. Let me... Okay. 
This should give give us a nicer visual into what's happening here. Okay, so now these are kind of contested, right? We can see that the yellows are trying to free up this place, and they managed to do that. And now they're racing to kind of take it back. Yeah, right. I feel like this is a nicer baseline. It's um kind of what we were expecting to see, right? Is a bit of like to and fro as the sides are like fighting over this territory. This is more intuitively how I kind of expected it to work. Good, good. Join the T crew. You refill mine over here. If I can speed this up a little bit, one way to do that is just to simulate several times each. Each time through the loop. If the neighbor zone, a faction is trying to conquer Conquer your zone, they should free all your influence in that zone. But yeah, okay, let's have a look, Macanario, and let's like pause this at a certain point and see what you're talking about there. So this, I feel, is what we would expect, right? They've both got equal power. They've reached what we'd call this like a steady state where they're just kind of going back and forth like this. Okay, so you're saying if the neighbor zone is faction is trying to conquer, conquers your zone, they should free all your influence in that zone. Are you saying that you should get your influence back and it should get used for something else maybe? Or I'm not quite, I'm, yeah, I don't quite, don't quite follow that. Okay, so we were talking about having a bit of randomness here. Um, sort of simulating like the, the players being a little bit different. So, yeah, that sounds good. So, let's say... So maybe each player gives between like 0 0.1 to 0 0.1. Kind of just making up numbers here. And let's actually give these like a player count, right? So maybe the church has got like... Should probably be much lower. The church has got like um, 300. They've got like 250, maybe. And 
And now the influence gain is not going to be 20, it's going to be something like... Number of players times random between... Okay, let's see how this goes. One of these, I, yeah, I think we gave the green like slightly more. Yeah, they've <laughs> they've taken the map quite easily there. So first of all, I need to prevent them from taking over. I'm taking over like somebody's home turf, I guess. And I'm gonna say something like if the owner is not null and If it's somebody's home faction, then we're going to ignore it, essentially. I think that will work for us. Yita, can you can you ease up on the <laughs> on the chat spamming, please? Good, good. Enjoy, enjoy your tea, calmly. Okay, yeah. So it looks like our green faction is always winning here. Um, okay, I got a diagram here from Akinaria. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so what is it about this situation here? Oh, well, they've still got influence left over. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I think we've... No, we haven't fixed that. Okay. Why is that? You know, I thought we had covered that. Why is that not happening? Oh, okay. Yeah, like if it's not... If it's not a neighbor anymore, then the influence should fade. So we could do that directly. We could try and reset it when it becomes like not a neighbor anymore. But easy way to do that is just to have a decay. Um, which we can kind of just do here.
put this up to a constant here. Oh, okay. You yeah, that is good. That is an interesting suggestion. So, a random chance for a rebellion to spark. That kind of does fit the theme quite well. I guess a rebellion could be as simple as like um, you just lose control of the territory, even though you owned it before. Um, and then you have to put your resources back into like taking that over again, which means that you're weaker like on the fronts. Okay, this actually is a really cool idea for a couple of reasons. So we're getting into this situation now, right, where one of our one of our teams is like stronger than the other. So you know, green has more people, so they just end up with more territory, and they they're pretty much going to end up winning eventually uh or well, yellow's gonna have no chance so let me screenshot it here right this is interesting because if there's a chance of rebellion then naturally the more territories you own the more chance there is that rebellion's gonna happen um you know, if, if these have got like 15 and these have got like only 5 or something, then the Greens are three times more likely to have a rebellion happen. And if they lose this territory, you know, and this one, then they're now weaker for a bit as they need to put their influence back into like taking these back over again, which means that the yellow maybe has chance to like spread, you know, and gain some territory here. So it's a, it's kind of like a balancing factor. Or you'd call this like a rubber banding mechanic, I guess, whereby whoever's ahead has some like inherent disadvantages because they're because they are ahead. So yeah, I suppose yeah, hmm. that's interesting. I really like that idea, and I kind of want to throw that in. So let me close this quickly. That's, yeah, that's interesting, right? So if you... Hmm. Yeah, so what we haven't looked at is what if you assign your people not to try and expanding, but to just defending the places you have already? Maybe it's like... If your influence decreases over time, then maybe when that drops below a certain level, that's when the rebellion happens. So you need to put your resources into, like, upkeep. Um... Yeah, like maintaining order. That's a really nice potential, like, yeah, balancing system for this, I think. So let me think about uh, how this would work. Yeah. So in terms of making a new faction, that could work if this is like a little mini game. But, uh, in the actual Steam Hounds multiplayer, it probably won't because a faction means, you know, a whole set of characters and artwork and color schemes and all of this stuff we'd need to make. So we can't really just have new factions crop up. But. You know, if this is just a little toy game that exists in its own right, then we definitely could do something like that. Um, so I will look into like a basic form of uh, rebellion, I think. That's kind of cool. Um, so I think what I'll do then, when you take over a territory, I'm going to set our influence to 100. And then let's have this decay happen. Oh, where are we? Um, and we'll just say. Um, let's have this only happen when it has an owner, I think. So if somebody owns this, well, if they don't, then we're just going to skip over it. Shield to the zone you're defending. Hmm. 
Yeah, I guess a way a way the shield could work is it just decreases their influence over that area. Something like that could happen, I think. Um, this influence decay rate um so i think we don't want to do this if it is um their home territory, like they should never lose influence there, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, I definitely appreciate these ideas, Akinario. Um In fact, there's so many things we could do right now that I'm <laughs> it's kind of exciting, like figuring out what to do. So what I'm what I'm thinking here is, um, we go through every territory. If they have an owner, and this isn't their home territory, then we're gonna de decay their influence a bit. If the influence drops below zero, then owner loses territory. This is kind of like a rebellion, but it's this is not random, so this is a, a possible version of that mechanic, I think. We just set everyone's influence to zero, and we set their owner to null. Otherwise, we're just going to update the influence. I think this will do what we want. Let's take a look, see how this looks. Oh. Well, that's weird, that's something. Eater's question, should I distance from a Papers, Please parody? I think it's fine to be inspired by that game, right? Like, there are games like Not Tonight, which was very popular, which was based on that. I would say making it a parody of Papers, Please is maybe not the best idea, but making it something that's inspired by that or in the same style, but just with a different theme, I feel like that's not a problem. It's, it's kind of become a little mini-genre now. I mean... If you're explicitly like referencing Papers, Please and trying to take the piss out of that game, then that's... I don't know if that's worth your time, but um, 
borrowing that style and having a different theme, I think, is, is not a bad thing at all. Yeah, McNary, that's a good point. So right now, this should probably only happen not on the edges of your empire, right? It should only be, like, inside. Um, I think I'll run it without that and see how it plays, but I think you're right that it... Yeah, maybe this shouldn't happen, because, yeah, that would kind of be weird, but... um. <laughs> hey you two, if you want to like have a little Easter egg in there <laughs> that references Steam Hounds, I'm I'm not going to complain. <laughs> okay, uh, I kind of lost track of what I was doing. Let me see if this works right now. So nope. Okay, I'm doing something weird still. Kind of hacky, but I kind of need to do this now because so I need to access these keys outside. I'm not a big fan of doing this, but could have structured this better. This will do for now. Canon? Should we, we'll call it Expanded Universe. How's that? <laughs> okay, so it looks like this is kind of doing what we wanted, right? Because our home is not losing influence, but these ones are. And then at a certain point, if we look at some of these green things, they're not doing any upkeep now, like the AI, if you like, or the strat is not set to do that, so it's these will just go down and they're going to lose all their territory at some point. Um, which is probably not ideal, but... Um, yeah kind of crazy, like all of this territory gets lost all at once. Maybe... It kind of had the effect we wanted, right? Is that um, yellow then got a resurgence, right? It, um... They, like, rallied because the green lost a load of stuff and then their effort went into building that back up. Let me watch that again, actually. Okay, so we're seeing these central places all losing influence at a similar rate. Yellow is really on the back foot, it's just never man managing to gain back any territory there. Then in a second, green's going to lose all of these and yellow will rally and then it will probably return to this steady state. Yeah, right, like yellow is taking the opportunity to gain a bit of territory on green. This is kind of cool. So I think it's an issue that all of this happened like right at the same time. Um, 
I don't know, maybe not, because in, in reality, if players are able to put their flag down on their own places to like help with upkeep, then maybe that wouldn't happen like quite so evenly. It's only because it's totally evenly distributed. So this is kind of like artificial right now in how perfectly evenly distributed everything is. Second time around, these won't be quite so in sync with each other. So we'll play out a little bit differently, I think. Yeah, this is definitely an interesting sort of little baseline system we've got going on here. So I thought about another way to kind of have these rebellions happen, if you like, is how about we did something like, um, rather than always losing the territory, there'd be a chance to, for that to happen, like a probability. I don't know, like a 1% chance, shall we say? I don't know. Um, make sure this doesn't get below zero. I don't really want that. It's at zero, and Eater. Okay, what's Eater asking? Can it be Steamhound's expanded universe? Um, I, I can't sign off on like <laughs> making an official Steamhound's expanded universe thing. There's actually IP and contract and legal stuff around that, which I can't just. I can't just say yes to that. Uh, hmm. Okay, so what you're saying, Makinari, is losing the yellow influence it has left off. By chance. Let me check something here. Okay, it's this influence you're talking about. Yeah, we need that to decay as well, I think, so... We can clean that up. So for each faction... Now, in this case, it's if I 
So I think Makanori, this is a bit closer to what you were talking about. So everyone's influence will decay. And then there's a special case where if it's the owner has no influence left, then there's a chance for rebellion. You know what, it could be as simple as saying uh, if not owned then we're just going to reset the territory completely Yep, Ita, great having you here. Um, okay, I actually don't want to do that. That was a bad decision, doesn't make sense. Something strange there. I've mixed up. Variable most likely.
Okay, I feel like this is kind of doing a bit more what we want. <laughs> the, the, the carrot is super high, but what's happening is once the... Even within your own territory, you kind of lose influence. And then when it gets to zero, it's now sitting every turn. There's like a chance of rebellion and losing that territory. So if we wait long enough, they should lose their influence here. Yeah, it's kind of happened to the neighbors, yeah. So it's a bit more random and scattered how this kind of territory loss works. Welcome back, welcome back. So I think I'm about reaching the end time here and I think we've got something kind of cool and interesting going on. So I'm just gonna up the speed a whole bunch and so we can watch this city kind of, um... yeah, right, it's a bit more chaotic. I feel like the this rate is still like, you know, this, these can be tweaked a lot. And what we haven't implemented yet is being able to like defend your own territory and keep things organized, yeah. Um, I feel like this is worth picking up again in another stream and what I'll probably do is make these strategies a bit more complicated. Right now we still only have this strategy of like putting all my resources into expanding my borders whereas um, if we change this to like you know certain percentage of the players are like upkeep, certain percentage are like focusing a certain place but then you know there are different ways of arranging that that should make things a bit more interesting and stable okay let me see this kind of fast motion territory kind of going back and forth I'm definitely at the point of just fiddling around, fiddling around now with this kind of stuff, but you know, we could drop this down a lot, a lot more. Yeah, and in this case, the rebellions don't. Make a great deal of difference. Right, this is the kind of thing we can tune in balancing, right? Because we the point of the rebellions here is to give the underdog a chance to catch up. But these simulations allow us to tune like the, the probability of these in order to make it have the kind of balance we want. Right? So it's like right now, um you know, one team has uh three hundred players and the other has two hundred and fifty. Um so we'd expect the distribution of territory to end up kind of, well, it's kind of up to us, right? Like, how even should it be? Is it right that the green, like, takes over all of this? Does this feel right for that kind of breakdown of players? Or do we want to make, you know, rebellions more harsh, for example, in order to uh, make this a bit more even most of the time? Like this, for example, this looks like a kind of interesting balance point, right? If it's... <laughs> to me, this feels kind of nice. Like, this is kind of a sweet spot where one faction is stronger than the other by, like, I don't know, 20% or something. And they're clearly sort of dominating, but it's not totally one-sided. Like, the yellow faction have little rallies occasionally. The internal rebellion scores the green to like lose some ground and have to repair. Like this feels kind of nice. Like the yeah, the yellow got almost back up to like 50-50 there for a little for a little moment.
maybe the faction with less players could get more resources. Yeah, like maybe there are certain resources which are, um, or maybe they're the same. Uh, but each because there's fewer players, each one has like a bigger portion of it, so they have more individual influence. Another whole side of this is how do you get players to not all just jump on board with like the winning, the current winning faction? So it's like you know, do you give them? kind of rewards in the game for allying with a faction who's like the underdog right now um yeah there's so many other factors which go into this beyond just like this simulation but i like this right now this is kind of working well for me i think we've got a good baseline system where we can now maybe in another screen stream begin to experiment with different mechanics and different systems and resources and stuff like that so definitely if anyone has ideas things we could try then uh you can hit me up on twitter at stray basilisk or even better actually let me throw that into the chat or into our discord that's probably the best place to kind of chat with me and the other devs and make suggestions and give feedback and stuff like that yeah so if you have thoughts and ideas about how the system could work yeah, so Machinaria, that's kind of how this will work, but we're thinking of having like a season-based thing, so maybe every month you will be asked which faction you want to join. So because the player is like running a mercenary crew, you're not really exactly loyal to any one of these factions, right? You're just taking on a contract to do work for them, so it kind of makes sense in the game world that you would switch between factions occasionally. So I think I will leave you with that. Um, so we're kind of streaming regularly at the same time. So it's about somewhere between 6 or 7 p.m. UK time each Friday. Um, next weekend also is our is our tournament. So if you jump on the Discord or, or on the Twitter, you'll find out about that. Um, but yeah, thanks so much everyone for watching and I will catch you next week.